Well, on behalf of Dr. Andre and Pastor Jenny Raybert, welcome to another exciting episode of Behind the Faith. Tando, always great to have you joining us. Listen, it's or so me. good. Is it us or me? <laughs> I don't know. We're, we're joining. We're joined. Just join. We're join. Joined. Just come along. Well, we are married, so we are joined as one. <laughs> Hello, everyone. We are married. I don't dispute that. Hello, everybody. I was wondering there so for a second because no, you were no, no, laughing no, 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 as no, no, I was saying. No, I'm laughing because because I was in one. I listen. I know they say women think like spaghettis and whatever. But um, you were in a box. Head. I was in a bit of a box there, and so I had to like just close the box I was in <laughs> and open a different box. You know how it goes. But um, hello, everyone. It's good to have you because I was gonna say I'm so excited for today. I'm so excited for what's coming up. I think it really is. It's it's. It's not, I don't want to say it's a passion project as if it's, it's, it's like this little thing that you do. It's such an imperative thing for every single one of us as believers to stand up in this world for all that we believe in and ensure that we leave a mark and we leave a legacy that is appropriate and is correct for the kingdom of God. But more than anything, to train up every single person, including the little ones, um, especially the little ones in the way that they should go. Because you know, you and I, we were trained up by our parents, okay, and it helped us along the way so we could be purposeful pe people so i'm quite excited for today's program that's why that's why that's yeah, why i was that. trained up by my dad we used to do bench pressing push-ups squats daddy didn't bench okay press. my dad didn't bench, <laughs> <laughs> bench <laughs> press. i'm just joking <laughs> but anyway thank you for connecting with us thank you for joining us listen if you don't have one of these yet this is the amazing faith daily devotional it is an amazing 366 devotions in yeah. here to bless you and of course each week ends off with something that's beautiful where it's got the um, you have some notes, some and, notes and things you can refresh and put on. So you can go to our website, myfaith.tv, that new website. We have myfaith.tv. And, of course, you can get yourself, you can purchase one right there on myfaith.tv. Uh, please be aware, of course, that there are some postage costs involved as well. And if you are contacting us from outside of South Africa, please note that the postage costs, costs that are there are for within the borders of South Africa. Mm -hmm. But please get this book. It is an incredible book. The devotions that you get to see, you receive by email or you receive via, what's the word I'm looking Facebook. for? On Facebook. Those are the devotions that we are talking about today. So get one of these books, get it in your hands, a hard copy. There is a PDF version as well on the website. Uh, this is the hard copy. You can get to read it. Tando and I read it every morning personally as well. And it is an incredible devotional book that you guys can do as a family. So every day, maybe before you head out into the hustle and bustle of the world, you can get yourself... And just by the way, it's not necessarily a replacement devotional, <laughs> just for everyone to understand. I cut myself off half sentence, you know that? Why? I cut myself off. You didn't cut me off. I cut myself oh, off half okay. sentence. Oh, okay. So it's the weirdest jump thing ever. So, <laughs> so everyone, listen, it, it's imperative for every single one of us to get a fresh download from God That's every right. single morning. So that is amazing. But this also is an additional tool, um, which is good word, because... At any given point in time in your life, you want to make sure that you have word on the inside of you sustaining you, and it expounds really beautifully on every single scripture or every single subject. Um, they've been prayerfully put together, um, and 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 it's it's to equip you. So it doesn't have to be oh, this is all you're going to read. You have to read your word. Okay, so That's right. just putting it out there. This is just a supplementary. Still got to read that. But it's powerful. It's powerful. Yeah. Today, what's today. going on? Okay, so today. Listen, you guys were with us during Faith on Fire, yes. and it was an incredible time. What an amazing time in the presence of God right there. But one of the things in one of the nights that Dr. Andre spoke about uh, was something which is called the Comprehensive Sex Education Bill, right. which is coming up, and it is going to be something that affects mainly, or it affects South Africa, really, because South Africa can't make laws on behalf of other, and other nations. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that was talking about is the implementation of this bill, the implications of this bill, how this bill's been put together, and what as family we can do. And one of the people that Dr. Andre was, was speaking about who is out there in the forefront uh, pushing forward is from Freedom of Religion South Africa. That's Mr. Michael Swain, who joins us today, of course, to talk about the Comprehensive Sex Education Bill. And we'll see if we can talk about anything else, but I think this is the one thing that's the hot topic right now, and he'll give us a few more ideas. Mr. Michael Swain, welcome to Behind the Faith. Great to have you joining us Thanks. once again. It's great to be with you. Fantastic. <laughs> well, let's jump straight into it. What is the Comprehensive Sexual Education Bill? Uh, bill or CSE? Well, CSE is Comprehensive Sexuality Education, mm. and it's a curriculum. 
okay. as opposed to a piece of law. Right. It's actually a series of scripted lesson plans mm -hmm. and educator guides, which are part of the CAPS curriculum, which will apply to state schools. Okay. Mm. And comprehensive sexuality education has been around for a while. It's been around in schools since about 2000. But this curriculum has been completely revised in keeping with UNESCO's international technical guidelines uh -huh. for sexuality education. Uh -huh. And it's not as if there isn't a problem in schools. There are issues surrounding sexuality. There's teenage pregnancies, uh -huh. there's HIV infections, uh -huh. STD infections, uh -huh. uh, rape, sexual abuse. Uh -huh. And therefore, it's not as if the government can't make a case for why it should teach on sex at schools. But the one thing which is absolutely clear is that you cannot teach about sex and sexuality from a value-neutral position. Of course. It's not like mathematics, of course. where one plus one always equals two, of regardless of where it's taught. Yeah. yeah. Sex is something laden with values. Mm. And so the critical component of this is who has the right to pass their values onto children. Mm. And absolutely settled in mm. terms of international law, mm -hmm. South African domestic law, and even the Department of Education's own white paper policy, it's parents. Right. You have the right to raise your child as right. you see fit right. according to your value system. Right. And we are very concerned because this curriculum has been developed with almost zero participation from parents. Mm. Mm. And that's a major problem of course. because parents are the primary stakeholders and teachers also have not been consulted. Sure. The Department of Basic Education has claimed that they have ex conducted widespread consultation, mm. but FEDSAS, which is the federal um, school governing body organization that represents school governing bodies, which are the parent mm. bodies mm. in every public school, mm. they are up in arms because they haven't been consulted. Sure. Teacher unions are saying their teachers are literally going to boycott teaching these lessons because sure. they haven't been consulted. Right. So there's been no right. consultation. Right. Sure. Now, yeah. you spoke about consultation, but you also mentioned you touched on parental rights. So let's talk about what are parental rights? Do parents, do, do parents even have rights? Parents absolutely have rights. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they are, the, your children are your children. And you internationally and domestically mm. are recognized as the primary caregiver. You have your children's best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. You are responsible, in fact, primarily for their education. So the state in the new South Africa, the big shift in education was that it was formerly the government developed the curriculum and everybody got taught it, yes. to there's now a partnership. Right. Parents are recognized as the primary right. people responsible for right. educating, and the state empowers that mm. by providing obviously the schooling system and the mm. teachers and the curriculum and what have you but it's very much a partnership mm. Mm. and the big concern about this curriculum is that there has been no consultation and secondly even if there had been should the state be allowed to basically teach what it decides to your children about sex yeah. and sexuality because it's an impressionable age what you learn as a child about sex and sexuality will fundamentally shape your life I mean, I've forgotten everything. I ever got taught about how to read a map or something like that, right, you know. Right, right. But sex and sexuality, yeah, that right. stays with you for life. It does. And so what we believe is critically important is that parents' rights are recognized, mm. that you as parents have the right to raise your child according to your value system. And therefore, when it comes to sex and sexuality, you must be able to see what's in the curriculum mm -hmm. before it's taught to your mm -hmm. child, and if you're not happy with it, you should be able to withdraw your child. Mm. And potentially, if there are enough parents in the school that nobody's happy with it, you should be able to choose or have the school choose right. or the school governing body choose right. an alternative curriculum with perhaps a different value right. set or system. Right. right. Oh, wow. So, a, 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 a bit of a question. So, if, if, if a parent's watching at home and they're like, what's this big hoo-ha? The school's always done their job. I mean, what, what, what's the big difference with the new curriculum when it comes to sexuality? Can you actually give us a bit of a picture there? Well, I think one of the claims of the Department of Basic Education yeah. with this specific curriculum mm -hmm. is that it does not sexualize children. Mm -hmm. Because that's the big problem. Mm -hmm. You see, if you can show that what you're teaching children perhaps is going to reduce 
HIV levels, right. reduce pregnancy right. levels, reduce sexual abuse levels or whatever it is, then maybe there's a good case for it. Mm -hmm. But there are two problems. Firstly, this particular curriculum, independent studies using UNESCO's own data, mm -hmm. which have looked at this curriculum, have actually established that in fact, instead of lowering, everything goes up and sure. quite significantly. Sure. So there's earlier sexual debut. There is more teenage pregnancies. Mm -hmm. And it's even worse, interestingly enough, in African contexts. So we believe that it's very, very important that parents understand mm. that this is a real thing. Mm -hmm. And that, yes, if you're happy, if you're comfortable with your child learning whatever the state decides to teach them, well, that's your right too. You can do that too. But if you're not, we believe those rights should be respected. Right. So, so, so this whole basic thing, because you're talking about it, that it's, it's your right, you can do what you want as a parent, right? Cool. Mm. But where is all this thing being? Because I, 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 it's like it's almost like this whole thing has been shrouded in mystery and it just pops out of nowhere and all of a sudden, hey, we're having a meeting, we're going to sign this thing off. So has there been transparency when it came to this thing? Not just like the consultation right. hasn't been there, we've established that, right. no. but has there been transparency? No, and, and, and again, that was the problem. So when the Department of Basic Education uh, came to Parliament mm. and presented this to the to the Education Parliamentary Portfolio Committee, mm. they did not even produce the materials that they were going that to be taught. Wanted. They just took the basis, trust us, and they made statements. So one of the statements was, for instance, um, this curriculum, CSE, will not sexualize children. So in the 12-year-old age, where children are typically starting to go through puberty, adolescence, their sexuality is beginning to awaken, one of the uh, educator guides says that the teacher must now give them a detailed description, and I trust the viewers aren't too sensitive right. here, on anal sex, oral sex, vaginal sex. How does that not sexualize a child? At 12 years old. At 12 old. years old. Grade how, four. How does that grade not, seven. that's not grade four. That's grade seven, so grade, grade yeah, seven. Grade sorry. seven, grade eight. Yeah. I mean, how, how does that not sexualize children? Yeah. It, of course it does, it must. And they're curious. Of course they're curious. So what are they going to do for homework? <laughs> You know, Practice. I mean, that's th th that is the problem. That's and true. so, again, this curriculum itself potentially harms children, therefore, because if everything was going down and there was less teenage pregnancies, less, you know, er later sexual debuts, etc., then there's a good perhaps case for it. But if actually it's going in the wrong direction and potentially therefore harming children, mm. well, According to the Constitution, one of the state's primary duties is to look after the best interests of the child. Yeah. And if it's harming them, that cannot be in the best interests. And so we are simply saying this is too fast. There's been almost zero consultation. Parents have not been consulted. Mm. Parents have not yet been formally given mm. the opportunity to even opt mm. their children out of classes. Mm. And it's really time to pull up the handbrake on mm. this and say, let's just pause because this will affect the next generation of children. So, if, if, if parents can opt out, so to speak, what are the alternatives? Because I'm thinking, obviously, now I'm going to my class and CSE is part of the subject. Uh, now I've got to get pulled out of class, but what do I do? Is there, is there an opt out alternative? Is there another alternative? Are they available? Do parents even know? Where can they find this information? Just and, and, and this, you've raised some very good questions because um, Minister Angie Mosheka mm. said, I think uh, about two days ago, mm. that uh, well, parents who don't want this can actually opt their children out. But that actually raises more questions, mm. the ones that you've just asked, mm. than it actually answers. Because she said as long as they are given an alternative CAPS compliant uh, curriculum to learn. But that's not the job for parents. In other words, it just shows how quick it is. You can't just say, well, just opt them out. How do they opt out? What are the alternatives? What do children do in those classes? How are they not potentially discriminated against or marginalized mm. by saying, mm. okay, you, mm. you, and you leave the class? Mm. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's been very poorly planned and very poorly thought through. And we have put a series of questions now to the Department of Basic Education mm -hmm. to ask them to clarify. What do they mean by parents can opt out? Their own spokesperson, by the way, immediately contradicted the minister and said, no, you can't opt out. And then, by the way, yes, well, if you do opt out, here are your options, private schooling or home education. That's not opting out. That's completely opting out of public school, which 
private schooling and which, which you which you have a which you have a right to as a South African right. citizen. So they can't just say, well, if you're not happy with what we're going to teach your child about sex, then take your children out of the public school system. I mean, that's ridiculous. And I don't think they necessarily mean that. Right. But it's just an indication of this is really sort of shooting from the hip and they haven't thought this thing through properly. And that's why we're saying, let's pause, let's reconsider, let's mm. consult. Mm. Uh, teachers who are going to be delivering this curriculum aren't happy with it. Parents are definitely not happy with it. Some parents, enough parents. And there are 40,000 parents on a Facebook group that came to pass in about a week, I think, um, who are saying, leave our kids alive, hashtag. So we're saying, as Freedom of Religion South Africa, parents, you have the right to exercise mm. your rights mm. to teach and educate your children according to your values. And we believe that's a very important position. Okay, so how do they begin now, the parents, to actually act on it? What, what avenues are available? What steps can they take at this point? I think there are a couple of very important steps. Mm -hmm. There is a consultative forum which the Department of Basic Education has put in place mm -hmm. specifically around this curriculum. Mm -hmm. It's a pre-existing thing. Mm -hmm. And there's a meeting on November the 27th. FEDSAS, which is the Federation for School Governing Bodies, mm. is going to be at that meeting and they are very unhappy about the lack of consultation. Yeah. What we need to do as parents, I think, is to actually make sure that the pressure flows upwards. So the best thing you can do as a parent, I think, is to contact your school, contact the school governing body, mm -hmm. send them an email. When you drop your kid off, go and knock on the principal's door mm -hmm. and say to them, what's happening with this, we're not happy with it, and right. make sure your voice is heard. Because when that meeting takes place in November on the 27th, and it won't be the last meeting, I can be sure, right. Right. but it's a good pressure point to make sure that the government and the Department of Basic Education specifically understands that parents are not happy mm -hmm. with the way this thing is literally being steamrolled okay. through. So, so let me get this straight. There's been little to no consultation. Parents' rights have been basically overlooked. Uh, there isn't really an opt-out option or alternatives that are there. The research figures aren't really supporting the state's case. There wasn't All transparency. To oh, uh, right. Uh, there hasn't been transparency with this whole thing. But parents can push back. I think parents, if they want to, should push back. Because the thing about a right is this. If you don't exercise your right, well, that's your choice, yes. but then you might as well not have the right. It's, 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 so, it's, it's your right not to exercise your right. Yeah. But the problem is, once you haven't exercised your right or made a conscious decision not to, yeah. you, you can't come back and be unhappy. Yeah, then you're left living with the consequence. And here's the thing, it's not the consequence to you, it's the consequence to your child. Right. And the right. generations that follow. So, so, so we need to understand, I think, as, as, as parents, as educators, this is our watch, and we will ultimately give perhaps give an account even to that generation who will look back at us and say, what were you doing? Where were you? Where were you? You, you know, Michael, I was actually thinking right now, even as I'm talking to the people who are watching and connecting with us, <coughs> Apostle Nikki said something very powerful during Faith on Fire. He said, how am I going to look at my son? He's got two sons, right? Um, and he said, how will I look at my sons and tell them, I allowed this during my, my watch. Mm. During my time, this was legalized. This was legalized. This was legalized. And that's the challenge I want to put out there. So maybe you're a parent or you're a grandparent. This is an opportunity, maybe your children aren't watching this program. But this is an opportunity for you to say, hey, listen, record this. Go onto Facebook, tell them. Go to myfaithtv.com Facebook page, watch this program. Now, this, for me, this is not about the, the advertising for people can watch more, but I think it's, it's important because instead of, like, Granny might not be able to explain everything the same way you're explaining everything right now, but Granny can say, or Grandpa can say, hey, listen, go watch it yourself. That's where you can yeah. get it so that you can see. Go to the website. Go to the Freedom of, uh, Freedom of Religion uh, South Africa website, which is the 4SA website. Mm -hmm. The details will come on the screen as well. And, and just learn about what's going on. We can't allow this on our watch. Maybe you don't have children, but you have a sister who's got kids, a brother who's got kids. Speak to them. Find out from them. Are they aware of what's going on? What are they doing? Yeah, and what are they doing about it? Don't just sit there and be like, well, I don't have kids. Or maybe you're a young person. <coughs> 
go to your parents and say, Mom, Dad, um, I'd heard about this thing briefly at school, but now I'm hearing about it even more right here on Beyond the Faith. Do you know what's going on? Let's quickly go to Freedom of Religion South Africa's website and get some more information. Let's go to Family Policy Institute with yeah. Errol Knight and get That's some very more, good one. more information yeah. so that we can be informed. The Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge because we don't know. Ignorance is the devil's playground. And that is a huge thing. Ignorance is the devil's playground. Do not allow yourself to be the devil's plaything. So that's why we have to mobilize. We have to join. We have to support. I know that um, Mr. Errol Naidu has a, 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 a petition. A petition. Too. A petition on yep. his website. So there's a petition on the Family Policy Institute website. We would certainly say if that's a one legitimate way of making your voice heard. Mm -hmm. There's a march in Cape Town mm -hmm. starting at 10 a.m. at the CPUT campus. Mm -hmm. uh, Oh, unfortunately, it's not in East London <laughs> where we are now, but um, and, and maybe there will be other marches. Yeah, because I think that in order to make your voice heard, you need to exercise every avenue and every, right. op every opportunity. Of course. That's right. Of course. So I want to encourage everyone watching, challenge, actually, I actually don't want to I want to challenge each and every single one. You might be watching in another country outside of South Africa, but you've got family in South Africa. You might be watching in the UK, in, in America, in Nigeria, in Kenya, Ghana, Pakistan, wherever you're watching from, but you've got family right here in South Africa. One of the things Dr. Andre challenged, he said, pray for us as a nation, as South Africa. You know, Faith Broadcasting Network, our headquarters, are right here in East London, South Africa. And we're constantly praying for the nations of the world. Of so we wanted to challenge you to pray for us. You might be like, well, I have no family, I have no connection whatsoever to South Africa. Then pray for us because we are part of the body of Christ. Continue to pray for us. And that's the one thing I just want to challenge everyone watching or who's watching right now, whatever platform you're watching on, whether you're watching a rerun, on demand, website, social media, I want to challenge you. Go and make a difference right now. Do not allow darkness and ignorance to rule, okay? We have a deal. That's what I want to challenge you with right now. You know, um, is there anything else you'd like to share on this topic? We've got very few minutes, and I just want to quickly touch on CRL just as an update. Is there anything else you'd like Perfect. to share? Let's, 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 let's jump over to CRL. Here. Let's go to CRL. Okay, for those who have no idea what CRL is. <laughs> Can you quickly, briefly give us a background on what's going on there? There is a CRL Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. It stands for Cultural, Religious and Linguistic Rights. It's an institution of the state set up by the Constitution Chapter 9. In South Africa. In South Africa. So it only obviously applies to South Africa in this yeah. instance. But they came out with a report in 2016 uh, called The Commercialization of Religion and the Abuse of People's Belief Systems. Mm. Yeah. And they identified problems that were taking place, particularly in the Christian faith, mm -hmm. particularly with independent churches. Mm -hmm. And their solution was to propose effectively what will amount to state regulation of religion. State regulation of religion is probably the death knell of religious freedom ultimately because it may start off benign mm. but anything that starts off benign can turn cancerous yeah and so this has been dismissed their recommendations have been dismissed by the uh, cooperative governance um, and a portfolio committee mm. there were hearings in parliament they dismissed the recommendations but they did say they wanted alternatives mm -hmm. by the faith community. Mm -hmm. There are problems, we acknowledge that, mm -hmm. but we just believe that state regulation of religion is not the answer. Mm. And so we have proposed for us, we are a legal advocacy group, so we're effectively lawyers. We, we look at what does the law say? How can the law deal with this? And the answer is the law can deal very effectively because every abuse that was identified, and they're serious things, were dealt with by existing laws. Mm. And so we have proposed five solutions, alternative solutions, which are available on our website. You can download these solutions, you can discuss them, but most importantly, you have to present those solutions because the CRL are still very much for what they want. And what they are saying is there are no alternatives. And so we, as the faith community, need to be putting alternatives before government because if we take what the CRL are proposing, that will drastically affect our faith 
and our faith rights. If we go with the alternative solutions, which require no further legislation, let me quickly give you um, what they are. Yeah. One is there are many fraternals mm -hmm. and many networks. Let's encourage people to become engaged with those because they provide a level of accountability, yes. they provide a level of education, they provide a level of relationship, and it's important that you're not isolated and alone. What about a code of conduct? That's what we were asked for. And there is, in South Africa, a religious freedom charter, which was signed by 22 million people from the faith community. Those are the rights. The same group that organized that have been mandated to now produce the responsibilities. In other words, the flip side of a right is a responsibility. Yes. They are developing and have developed a, a well-developed draft of a code of conduct. Mm. Effectively, that's what the responsibilities amount to. Training and education. We all believe that we are in ministry because we are called by God. Mm. We're not there because we got a degree. Mm -hmm. We're there because we're called. But you educate your calling, very importantly. And lastly, the CRL is a very important <coughs> function of state. They're an organ of state. They have very strong powers granted to them by their own act of parliament to investigate where they find abuses and to recommend any organ of state, to engage any organ of state. It could be SAPs, the police services, could be the revenue services, could be the Department of Home Affairs mm. or whatever it is to actually go and deal with the problems Very that they identify. Yeah. And then lastly, they even have the power to register religious institutions which is a big difference from regulating. Yes. Right. You register your cell right. phone. Right. Mm. You just provide right. information. Right. They don't put a bug on your cell phone no. to record all your conversations and the websites you visit. That would be regulation. <coughs> so registration is far less intrusive. Of course. And again, of course. we are saying that religious freedom rights must be respected. As long as what you do is lawful, the Constitutional Court of this country has already ruled that even if a religious practice mm. is bizarre, irrational and illogical, mm. it's still protected. Mm by religious freedom. Mm. And we have to be very careful that we don't start to ask the state, for example, to back whatever we think is the right view of theology or Christianity. Mm. Because as soon as you see the state mm. and any branch of religion teaming up together, it's going to end horribly for someone. Sure. So leave the religious sector self-regulated. Mm -hmm. mm. It's very wow. Good. Well, that's very good. Well, Michael, thank you very much for joining us. And of course, it's been an honor and a privilege. And I know you were busy around <coughs> East London yeah. doing meetings Here. after meetings with oh. fraternals and different groups out there. So good to be here. And thank you for your hard work. And listen, for each and every single person watching right yeah. now, if you can go to the uh, Freedom of Religion website as well, Freedom of Religion South Africa website as well, and that's even for support, a for a a a support the work they're doing, partner with them, connect with them, yeah. um, so that they can still go further and do more and more and more and more and more for the kingdom of God. And please. our Facebook page. And, yeah, and please go to their Facebook page as well. Well, guys, thank you for connecting with us today. It has been an honor and a privilege to speak to you and share with you all this important stuff around um, what's happening within the religious and legal space within, the, within South Africa. Thank you for connecting with us on behalf of Dr. Andre and Pastor Jenny Raybert. We love you. God bless you. Shalom.